All right, so I'm going to go through each character from Unmatched and give you my top three favorite cards in their deck. So to start here, we'll go with Invisible Mans. He can deal three damage uh, to an adjacent fighter if he's out of fog. Um, that's really good, and there's two of them. That's six free damage. And with uh, Invisible Man, that's what you got to do. So uh, he doesn't have too much attack power. Uh, this um, I like to use it as an attack, but it can also work nicely as kind of like his feint. There's two of them. Uh, their attack or defense value is zero, zero, and can't be changed by a card effect. And then as the last one uh, that I like personally is move a fog token because you can run in, attack, then move the fog token to another space. Uh, but watch out if somebody faints this, they take one damage, but then they got an attack on you and you can't get the extra bonus defense with the fog. And then here we got Mr. Hyde, pure evil. He can move to any space in his zone and deal two damage to all adjacent fighters. He can kill sidekicks, and that's nice for him because he doesn't have any himself. And there's three cards in the deck, so that's six free damage. Um, this also deals damage um, if you're adjacent to the opposing fighter you flip your top card of your deck put it in your hand you don't even have to discard it and they take damage equal to the boost so that can be nice and then of course forever hide uh, you may discard dr jekyll cards add two to this card's value for each card discarded so it's kind of neat to build up a hand and do that or build up a hand and play some other card um, and then your opponent might faint it and then you still have the hide and all the jackal cards ready for your next attack. Uh, next up is Sherlock and eliminate the impossible. Choose an opponent, look at their hand, and choose a card for them to the discard. A lot of characters can do stuff like this, but when you play it in conjunction with Confirm Suspicion, um, you'll know their hand and you'll be able to uh, know how much damage you're giving them right after. So you can run away and do both those. Um, and then the third one, it's a good defense. Uh, and for when they come up, for when the opponent comes up to Sherlock and tries to fight him, he can use this as a defense and deal two damage to that fighter, which is nice. Dracula, obviously, i got to throw Beast Form in there because it's so nice. Six attack and plus one for each card you discard. That's really nice. Uh, do My Bidding is probably my favorite in his deck because you can just instantly negate somebody else's effect um, and throw their card back in their hand and that's really nice and you can get rid of their feints that way and whatnot um, move any fighter up to two spaces and deal one damage to the move fighter for each sister adjacent to them that's nice and it's not that hard to set up believe it or not um, you can usually get both of them and there's three copies of this so you can usually get them all. If not, if your sisters are dead, you can still move um, move the opposing fighter as long as you have one sister on the on the board. Um, larger than life, he's got three of them. That's why he's my favorite in his deck because there's six attack and he can just hit you hard. It's just your imagination. It's pretty much a better thing. And move the jackal up up to five spaces, jackalope horns, um, as I like to call it, jackalope antlers, then deal two damage to any one fighter adjacent to the jackalope, and there's three of those, so again, that's six free damage, unless you can kill that jackalope. Robin Hood, Willy fighting, this is nice, deal one damage to each opposing fighter adjacent to your fighter, so that's nice, and your opponent discards a Random card and adds its boost value to this card. You can even use sidekicks with this because it's an any card. They're discarding and you're gaining attack. Now, this is kind of his best card in my opinion because uh, they either have to take it or faint it. So you're making them waste their feints on your sidekicks cards here instead of your main fighters cards. Sinbad's difficult because he pretty much has just voyages that are interesting so he recovers two health that's nice deal two damage to opposing fighter and that's also a nice benefit 
Um, and then the Voyage Home actually has a boost value, so you can do stuff with it, like boost your move if you don't want to use it at a certain time um, in the game. And you can also use it in the game at certain times, usually near the end, to get uh, all your Voyages back in hand and back ready to attack. On to King Arthur. I like Merlin's uh, the fact that he can look through the top four cards of his deck and <clears throat> add two of them to his hand. That's really nice uh, that you can look through and see what you can do next with Arthur. Obviously Excalibur because it can be boosted and it's already a flat six. Um, Ada Morgana because Arthur struggles drawing cards and if you can if you can play this card you'll be able to draw some more cards and he needs that. Um, Alice, my favorite character so far. We deal two damage <clears throat> to any one fighter adjacent to the Jabberwock. That's nice. Um, it's better than the other one that the Jabberwock has, because even if it gets fainted, this one deals more damage regardless. Um, and then Old Fabulous Joy, change size. So you can go in for six attack, then change to being small. So that's nice. Um, here's an excellent card. Probably one of the best defense cards, not not in terms of value, but the the benefits after are really nice. And there's two of them, recovering three health. That's six health recovered in a game. If you won the combat, deal eight damage to the opposing fighter. Here's Medusa's Gaze of Stone. If you can pull that off, that's nice. You always want to defend against Medusa in case she's got one of these uh, that she's trying to play against you. Deal two damage to any one fighter in Medusa's zone. Just free damage again, and there's two of those. She's already dealing free damage with her ability, and that on top of it is nice. Your opponent discards one card, um, and it's a four value defense, which is um, always good to have uh, four or more uh, when you're defending. And the bonus of them discarding, and there's three copies. Uh, two copies of working things out here. With the Raptors, move each of your fighters three spaces. You may move them through. Sometimes you need to get around using your Raptors because uh, they struggle to surround somebody sometimes, especially on smaller maps. And then you gain an action. So that's nice. This is a really good card. It doesn't look like it, but as long as it's not fainted, you're gaining another action. And sometimes people think you're playing your first card being a f uh, this card, so they'll f try to faint. So what you should do is not play this one and play um, a different one. Like a, his, I think he has got a flat five or something like that. So the Raptors could play a higher value card, and not and it wouldn't get fainted, I, I believe. Um, pack of hunters. If you want the combat deal of damage to the opposing fighter for each Raptor adjacent. So if you already have all of your Raptors adjacent to the opposing fighter, uh, the value of this would be six, and then. They're taking three damage after. Um, Muldoon, call for backup. The fact that he can place all of his defeated engine workers twice in a game, because there's two copies, is great. Um, they should all be destroyed during combat. This attack is plus one for each trap adjacent to the opposing fighter. So that's cool too, because uh, you can throw a trap out and then shoot him with it, and now it's a five. Um, and then a four defense. I like having four or more defense. And then he's able to move through opposing fighters um, up to five spaces, which is quite a bit. And that's each of your fighters. So you can surround them, you can block them off, whatever. Now we got Spike. Deal one damage to the opposing fighter, then deal an additional one damage for each space with a shadow token adjacent to them. If you can get those shadows adjacent, which you can with this next card I'm about to show you you will be able to damage them a lot more. Draw two cards, place a shadow token in spike space in each adjacent space, each space adjacent to um, spike. So uh, that's really good because you can set up the this card here. So seek the shadows. The site, now this is probably one of the best cards in its deck and it's uh, Dursilla's card. Choose an opponent and look at their hand. Choose a card for them to discard if any of their fighters are in space with the shadow token. Choose two cards for them to discard. So there's two of those. You're, you're making them discard up to four cards. And it's easy to pull off. 
Um, choose an opponent and look at their hand. This is Buffy now. And uh, this guy here, he uh, choose one card in their hand for them to discard. So it's just simple. There's three of them. And you can really uh, mess somebody up if you can get rid of an Excalibur or um, a Beast Form or something like that. <clears throat> uh, rapid Recovery. Uh, even if they hit you for four, they might as well have hit you for zero because you get to recover a health. And this is just a value two, but then she can move up to three spaces and deal a damage to each opposing fighter adjacent to her. So that's her kind of sidekick killer card too. And then we got Faith here in Angel's deck. Deal two damage to one opposing fighter adjacent to Faith, similar to a lot of the cards where they deal two damage. Faith has three of these, so that's six damage again, which is crazy. Um, if you lost the combat, recover health. So if you lost the combat, you're going to be able to, with his ability, draw a card and recover a health. And if you didn't lose, um, that's no problem because they're taking damage. And then brooding. If you lost the combat, the opposing fighter takes one damage. So um, I like to save that for a defense. And if I get damage, they get damage too. Flayed Alive can be dangerous because you're burning through your deck, but the blind boost of four is very nice, especially if you grab another Flayed Alive and it becomes a seven. Uh, five is a very nice, uh, solid defense, and you get to become Willow after, even if Terra is gone. <clears throat> um, and then here's Terra's card. If you won the combat, choose a card in your discard pile and add it to your hand. That's really cool. Because you get to do that twice in a game. Look through your discard pile and add a card to your hand. Uh, here's Bruce Lee. All of his attacks are plus one value, gain one action. And that is pretty sweet because um, he can lay both of these. Or he can choose to uh, lay one and then another. Or it, it just depends on what cards you get in your hand. And then we got deal two damage to an adjacent fighter. If this defeats that fighter, return this card to your hand instead. That's really good because he doesn't have any sidekicks, and this is a sidekick killer card for him. Um, and then be like water helps him choose his Jit Kundu cards, and uh, his discard pile and add them to his hand. And those are nice because they set off his combos. And last but not least, we got Beowulf and Little Red. So Beowulf. Uh, Wig Wiglaf here deals a damage and then Beowulf uh, if he's dealt damage this way gains an action and not only that he would also gain a um, rage so you go in you damage him he gets a rage he gains an action he can attack uh, the equal to, of Grendel this is crazy if you have two rage you can deal damage to the opposing fighter equal to the printed value of their card if they lay out a six, like Bigfoot six, or um, King Arthur boosted something, um, they would just take the flat six of Excalibur or Larger Than Life or whatever it may be. So that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> the Ancient Heirloom. Uh, this can potentially be a really big attack if you have all your rage. You can spend a rage to boost it, and it's a five if you spend two rage. So. You're looking at five, six, seven, eight, about 11. Uh, I think 11. Let me see. You get five. Oh, it becomes a five. So five. So it can be a potential of eight attack with his deck. And now we got Into the Woods here. And Into the Woods, there's three copies of Move Little Red Riding Hood up to three spaces, gain an action. And the reason that I have to show you all three of them is because... They have different little icons, as you can see. You got the wolf's bane and the knives and the and the pelt. So she can move three and gain one action. She only moves two, and this really helps. It also helps her set up because she can then um, use one of these three cards here to uh, prepare uh, whatever little symbol there, um, either the wolf's bane or the pelt or the knives because then uh, she could set that up and play a different card like say she played this one well now she has the little um, flower and she can use this once upon a time or uh, maybe not that card 
oh, if she plays this one, this into the woods first, then she can use the knives to play once upon a time. And once upon a time will deal three damage to the opposing fighter. And she's got two copies of once upon a time. And then also we got what terrible, what a terrible big mouth you have. Um, deal damage to the opposing fighter equal to the printed value of the card. Again, you can damage somebody worth um, like a six or five or whatever. Usually you're not going to get that, but it's devastating if you do. So that's my quick uh, overview of my top three cards in each deck. Uh, let me know what your top, your, your favorite cards are in the decks. Do you have a favorite card that you like to use or uh, feel great when you pull off? Let me know.